Hi, I'm Femi OK. There are some sports which were typically known as sports in a white atmosphere, white communities, that have been broken through by people of colour and been transformed forever. Golf, tennis, ice skating. But when we're talking about snow sports and mountain sports, not so much. But there are some people today I want you to meet who are aiming to change that. Let's meet some of them. Growing up into the sport of skiing, the thing that brought me to skiing was this feeling of freedom. Never before had I ever felt something that made me feel so free as I did on the mountain. I could go explore certain areas. I could go jump off a cliff or in the park. I, I could express myself the way I wanted to. And I felt never more free than when I was on my pair of skis. I am the first person of color to be sponsored by a ski resort. And what snowboarding means to me is having fun, going out there and doing my thing and doing what I love. When asked what does snowboarding mean to me, snowboarding is sort of a, a, a crazy addiction to the snowy outdoors. I feel like uh, snowboarding for the black community uh, has a really great chance of succeeding um, and becoming not just a minority in the sport, but uh, really being able to pave the way for the future. So much promise there. Let's meet our guests. Hello, Winona, Emily, Lamont. So really good to see you. Winona, please introduce yourself to our stream audience. Tell them who you are and what you do. Hi, everyone. So my name is Winona. I am one of the co-founders of Mount Noir. Um, Mount Noir is a travel community all about bringing colour to the mountains. We encourage black and ethnic minorities to ski and snowboard, um, some of them for the first time. Um, we create trips and plan um, events, mainly in the UK and in and around London. All right. Lovely to have you. Hello, Emily. Introduce yourself to our international viewers. Hi, um, my name is Emily Zenobia. I am a Yale uh, master's candidate at the School of Environment, where I focus on climate policy. And I uh, spend time working as a professional snowboarder um, and just had our thumb come out, the approach. Fantastic. Lovely to have you. Lamont, introduce yourself to our viewers who may not know who you are and what you do. Hi, I'm Lamont Joseph White. I am an artist and designer, and I live in Park City, Utah, where I snowboard quite often and um, hike and bike and just enjoy the outdoors. I would love to hear your snowboarding, your skiing stories, people of color around the world. I know you do it. I know you do it. Here is our comment section. Join in our comment section. If you've got questions for our guests, you're very welcome to be part of today's show. Looking forward to having you. Winona, I am thinking about your first time, your first time on snow. Actually, it wasn't snow, but the first time you t attempted to ski, what was that like and what made you want to do it? So I sort of started skiing in my 20s and yeah. I decided in, at university to you know, try a lesson on dry slopes in London. And it's not snow, but it was amazing. It was fun. Um, I enjoyed it. And at that point, I wasn't quite able to go on a ski trip. But, um, you know, a few years later, I decided I'm going to go try this. And the amazing time I had on the slopes has kept me going back every year. Um, so for me, it's, yeah. you know, the fun of falling down, the fun of trying something new, going down different um, slopes is literally what's, you know, promoting me to keep coming back. Lovely. Lamont, the first time that you ever either put on a snowboard or you put on skis, can you remember back then? What was it like? Yeah, just like Winona, I, I didn't start until I was in my 20s. It's something that I wanted to do as a child. And um, I'd see some of my friends in school come back on Mondays after a weekend of snowing, uh, of skiing, and they'd have their ski tags hanging from their jackets and um, I'd be like, geez, I want to try that. Yeah. And it wasn't until I, until I was in my 20s when I did. Some friends brought me to the mountains, and I was just hooked immediately. Uh, Emily, we have some pictures of you. It's a beautiful slideshow. When did you know that you were good? Like, not just OK, but really good. <laughs> Well, you know, I consider myself a, a lifelong student, so I'm always learning and there's always more 
skills to pick up, um, especially especially as you head into the backcountry. But um, yeah, I I have to sort of back what both Winona and Lamont said. Uh, what drew me in was just like the curiosity, the play, um, just getting to you know try hard things and fall and get back up in this sort of mm -hmm. somewhat in some circumstances controlled manner. So. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, it's just a really incredible sport. Go ahead, Lamont. I hear you going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I, I, I think what resonates with all of us is just the freedom and enjoyment of being out there in the mountains. And um, it's really kind of like no other experience in life, no matter what's going on in your life at that time, you can escape, um, you can find joy, you can find stress release. Um, and, and just have a have a blast while you're doing it. Yeah. So I think it's it's one of these things that uh, we feel we feel blessed and privileged to do. I'm just looking here, Winona, at uh, your Instagram account for Mount Noir. You look extraordinary. Look at that picture. You look in your <laughs> element. I remember the first time that my school uh, uh, announced that they were going to do a skiing trip. This was in South London. And I had to do a whole project for my Nigerian parents who had never <laughs> seen snow. And I remember when I was 13 years old, I drew skis and I said, these are skis and then this is snow and this is what you do on skis on snow. And, they, and I, obviously it was persuasive because they, they coughed up the money to allow me to go skiing. And I've been skiing ever since I was 13 years old. But there is a cultural gap there. Now, I'm not everyone's got Nigerian parents that need to be convinced with an, a river project, but there is a cultural gap there between what is seen to be a sport that is not for black people and people of colour and a sport that's for Europeans or for white people. Well, Nona, how did your family handle you being a skier? <laughs> so we have similar backgrounds. So my parents are from yeah. Ghana. Yeah. Um, so I know all next about... Next door, what we're cousins. Yeah. Yeah. We're next door, we're, you know. Yeah. Um, so I know it's all about how you felt in terms of like having to convince them that it was normal to, you know, propel yourself down a mountain at, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes 50 miles per hour. Um, but my at first I didn't actually tell them that I was going. I just, you know, did it. And then oh. I came back. I told them, oh, look, mom, this is where I've been. And um, now she even wants to come skiing herself. But I definitely recognize that there's a lot of stereotypes and a lot of um, even in the black community about what it's like to be, you know, go skiing. The first thing I say to people, um, you know, I, I like skiing and they're like, really? It's cold, isn't it? Like, that, we don't do that. <laughs> Black people don't do that. Yeah. That's not for us. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of stereotypes within the community. Um, African parents are another sort of war game. Um, people have fears of it being a dangerous sport or, you know, too expensive or it's only for white people. And those are the, you know, it's not the case because you've got three people sitting here who love skiing and snowboarding. So um, I definitely understand, but definitely need to break down these barriers. Oh, my, my director just told me he snows balls. We've got a, a little uh, black and brown club going on right here, a little ski club going on here. Um, I'm just looking at my laptop, Emily, and, and these figures really say pretty much everything about the US um, people of colour who ski. So 87.5% are white, then 6% Asian, 5% Latino or Latina, 1.5% black, 1.8% <clears throat> another, 7% indigenous. You will see that this doesn't all add up to 100 because some people are in more than one category, okay? But the point is that up here are the majority of people who ski and they're not people of color. Emily, how is, how does that impact you when you are on the slopes. Yeah, um, I would say it empowers me to be present and take up space. Uh, you know, it's no accident that uh, skiing and snow sports are predominantly white, um, just due to the pattern of settlement that occurred in the US with redlining and forced migration and exclusion from um, natural areas and parks. And so it really is about going and reclaiming space. Um, and I'm sure uh, Lamont, you can probably agree. 100%, 100%. I look at those figures. Um, as Blacks, we're 14% of the population in the United States. And when I've gone to mountains over the years, I, I kind of, quite frankly, accepted the fact that um, 
it was a white majority sport. And then I was amongst a super minority in that space. Uh, but after a while, I started to question that. And um, instead of just accepting it, figure, you know, what can I, what do I have to say about it? What can I do about it? And that's why I created the Skiing and Color Collection. Um, and I'm pleased with the reaction. There's been a lot of people I didn't realize were having this conversation prior to um, me painting the pieces that I have. And uh, I'm, I'm super happy that I can be just one voice in this narrative, um, like Emily said, to reclaim spaces, to renormalize and recondition what, where we think we belong or where others feel like we belong, just to change that narrative and flip the status quo. Lamont, I'm going to show some of your pictures off here, and I'll show some more in a moment. So the, the picture just to the side of me here, this is you reclaiming spaces, spaces so that it, it's okay for you to ski if you're black or snowboard if you're black. Um, a beautiful one piece here, a sister in a one piece. And then this picture here of the gent skiing, it looks like a photograph. It's so beautiful. So this is some of your work where you're showing off Images that people don't normally get to see when they're on the slopes or not so much. What difference does that make, Lamont, do you think? Well, like it's often said, if you see it, you can be it. Ah, um, yeah, yeah. I'm a strong believer in, in representation. Yeah. My role is to exercise representation through my artwork. Um, it's going to take a lot of voices to change the narrative. Uh, I've been told by many people as they've discover me in this space that it's a long road and I immediately, immediately let them know that that's fine. Um, black and brown people are used to long roads. Um, mm. I'm not going anywhere. Um, right now I'm in a place where I'm promoting the narrative of, of changing what is normal in outdoor spaces, mountain spaces, in nature and whatnot. And one day I hope to be just um, presenting images that are maintaining diversity that's lacking. So um, Quite frankly, if we can invite black and brown people into nature more often, uh, nature will take care of us and we'll in turn take care of nature. I'm just going to show some. And, oh, yeah, go, go ahead, Emily. Go, you, you keep I talking. I'm going to show some of Lamont pictures. I completely agree. Yeah, go, go ahead. <laughs> yeah um, you know, as Lamont is saying, this is about developing a connection with your inner self as well as the natural world. You know, it is really important. Black and brown people make up a significant part of the population globally. And, you know, we're in the midst of a climate crisis. We need to start building connection and reclaiming this space because this is important to our own survival. Um, yeah. Emily, Absolutely. you were in a film that, that's come out now, perfect for, for uh, ski season, which is bringing together a lot of people from different backgrounds and diversities, uh, different diversity. Um, so some people may um, have uh, challenges in terms of physical challenges um, and just like a whole spectrum of people that you don't always see or maybe you don't notice on the slopes. The film's called The Approach. Here's a little clip so people can see uh, what's going on in it. Close. Oh. Respect the sand. I think I just need like a little bit more belief in myself, really? and then I would have it. And I feel like that's one of those moments where it's like, oh, I can do the thing, I can try the thing, but if I don't actually believe that I'm gonna land it, I feel like the nar can tell. <laughs> Emily, that's your mate. I can see you smiling broadly. But yeah. let's, let's be really frank here. It costs a lot to hit the mm -hmm. slopes. So maybe it's not just about, well, it's a cultural thing. Maybe it's just because it's really expensive. Right, right. There are many, many um, socioeconomic barriers to this space. Um, snowboarding, snow sports are incredibly expensive. Um, and so, you know, when we're thinking about how to increase participation, I, there needs to be a lot of uh, attention paid to this um, in terms of creating opportunities to, you know, bring um, gear to nonprofits, just continuing to grow that space. There's so many 
um, nonprofits working in this space right now um, with disadvantaged youth, uh, people of color, um, so many different affinity groups and identities. And uh, yeah, I mean, that is a much bigger problem than, than just snow sports, right? It's a microcosm of all of the issues that we're experiencing in the, in the, in the U.S. and I think globally. Yeah, I definitely agree with you, Emily, there. I think even, you know, outside of the black community, it's quite expensive to, you know, go on a ski trip. Um, so if anyone can sort of, you know, help in terms of making sure the entry point is a little bit lower, whether it's at the resort level, whether it's the gear that you have to buy, you can definitely get more people yeah. into skiing and snowboarding. Because if you don't come from sort of, you know, certain backgrounds, whether you're black or not, it's yeah. very difficult to navigate, you know, a ski trip or a snowboarding trip. I've just got sure, to... And oh, go on, you, Lamont, you go yeah. first and I'll bring in some tweets later. Go, go ahead. Sure, sure. Um, I just want to say we can build those bridges. There are barriers, right? Uh, there can be financial barriers, geographic barriers, cultural barriers. Um, uh, my family growing up, we could have afforded a ski trip or two, um, but it wasn't culturally anything we ever had a conversation about. Um, my parents growing up in um, the Depression era in, in, in Baltimore and in Brooklyn, it's just not a conversation. Let's go to the slopes and ski. It wasn't something that was uh, normal in my household at all, but it was something to, I was that I was attracted to from afar. But, um, you know, I am part of the, for instance, I'm part of the Ski Utah Inclusion Committee, and we're starting to build some of these bridges, right? There are many other nonprofits that are bringing kids, which is very important, and families to the slopes, right? So there are opportunities, fundraisers that go on with these nonprofits that can help build these bridges. And if we can bring families and kids to the slopes four or five times in a season, that plants the seeds, mm. right, to get people hooked, right? Those who will be hooked, get them hooked. Mm. And, um, and little by little, we start to build the diversity and inclusion. I'm going to show you, I guess, a couple of tweets sort of supporting what you've been saying about the, the cost of skiing. And, and you've come up with a couple of solutions around that cost of skiing. Marielle's watching. She says the cost of tickets, passes, equipment. As kids grow, you need to replace their skis and boots. There's also a risk of injury. Having good insurance is practically a prerequisite. Oh, good thought there, Marielle. Afsal mm -hmm. Amin says, yes, it is not cheap, but a superb activity for physical fitness, socialising and mental well-being. I've not yet found anything better. And if you like to have tough thighs, like thighs that don't wiggle, one day on the slopes, <laughs> that's all it takes. Really, it's like, like iron thighs, one day on the slopes. Um, if I haven't persuaded you yet, perhaps this might. This is a little uh, trailer for Mount Noir. It's uh, a travel company that Renona set up to take people of colour from the UK skiing. Let's take a look. Where will we go? When the quarantine thing done and everybody touch road. We're all vibing to the music, Renona. It's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, we're, book, book me up for February. <laughs> um, Renona, how is it? How is it going? I know COVID is not helping. Um, none of us have forgotten COVID, and and that is a major issue in terms of getting on the slopes and and doing the things that we love to do outdoors. So, um, that aside, the idea, the concept for Mount Noir, how's that going? So we launched shortly just before, you know, the COVID pandemic hit. So we were very lucky to have our first um, trip just before we all went into lockdown. Um, and obviously COVID hasn't been great. And for me, I work as a doctor and so I've been in the, um, you know, the thick of it. But in terms of, you know, travel and knowing what you can plan for and what you can't, it's, you know, it's quite difficult at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, even recently, as you can see, some of the, you know, travel plans have sort of changed. Um, in terms of what we look, strive for is we look for companies who are flexible um, with, you know, cancellation and, you know, planning for a big trip. And a lot of people have been accommodating. 
Um, but at the same time, as much as we want to stay safe and as much as we want to um, yeah. make sure that we're having a great time on the slopes, it's difficult to know and project. Um, but we do make sure that if any cancellations do occur, that you know our guests will be refunded as much as okay, we can. That's, that's good to know. Um, so uh, we know now. I've got a couple of questions for you. I'm gonna, this is going to be a speed round because I've got so many questions. I want to share them with all okay. of you. All right. So Natasha says, "What was it like on your first ski trip, Winona? Seeing that it was a completely new sport for you, very quickly, Winona. Go ahead." So it was quite daunting. It was quite scary, um, but. I enjoyed every moment of it. I enjoyed falling. I enjoyed the people that I'm, um, you know, the company that I met on the slopes and yeah. some of them are my friends today. All right. Turtle Toes says, we need more information getting to our communities and breaking the stereotypes. Lamont, you handle that one. I think it starts with the mountains themselves. People who own and operate the mountain spaces are kind of, I feel like, at the top of the pyramid. And once these mountain owners and operators start to do more with their marketing, do more with their hiring, do more with their on mountain and off mountain presence of black and brown people, right? That's going to set the tone for brands, for the main street of mountain cities and, and, and outdoor communities to say, hey, if the owners and operators of these spaces are intentionally inclusive, mm. then we can follow suit. I think until they make long lasting um, moves uh, in perpetuity. Um, we're still going to treat inclusion as a trend, uh, right? We're still yeah. going to treat diversity as a trend. And, you know, skin color is not a trend. Emily. And where we, where we see it lacking, sure. we, need to, we need to make moves. Emily, go ahead, you're nodding. Yeah, you are spot on, Lamont. And I think this uh, extends to the outdoor industry as a whole. Um, you know, I have to be honest, my career really took off after the summer of Black Lives Matter and um, after George Floyd. Um, and so that that is that's really hard to hold. That's, you know, um, and it shouldn't be the case and it should not be a trend. Absolutely not. Amen. I want to bring uh, two more skiers into our conversation because I think I think they take us to where do we go next? I know you, all three of you, you love being on the slopes. It is not your job to bring diversity to the slopes. That is not your job. Your job is to just enjoy yourself out there and maybe encourage some young people to do it too. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to uh, Benji Ski. Here he is. Hi, I'm Benjamin Alexander, and I'm about to become Jamaica's first ever alpine ski racer to represent the country at the next Olympic Games in Beijing 2022. We need to get more people of color into the outdoors, into skiing, into winter sports. And to do that, we need more people of color to be successful role models in the sport, to prove that this sport is for everyone, that everyone can have fun and enjoy the outdoors, no matter where you're from. We need the Tiger Woods of skiing. I believe the reason why we don't see more people following in my footsteps is the barrier to entry. So I feel like as a whole, the ski community needs to come together and put together learn to ski programs and make it more accessible for, uh, you know, uh, people of lower income levels to be able to participate in this amazing sport. I can't wait to see the Tiger Woods or uh, one of the Williams sisters of, of snowboarding or skiing. It's, it's, it's bound to happen. Lamont, thoughts? It's Zeb quickly. Powell. Yeah. Can I just say? Yeah, yeah. Zeb yeah. Powell. Zeb. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm. Yeah. Great. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That no, is, they're yeah. out here. Yeah. We're not they're out all there. new. I think yeah. this narrative needs to change. There are a lot of established lot. Uh, black and brown snowboarders and skiers we're out here all right thank you yeah. thank you for setting up our future guest right because we have <laughs> get, the, get those guests onto the onto the stream so we make it so that everybody knows who these names are they can watch them follow them support them thank you so much guests it's been such a pleasure let me just show you on my laptop this is Winona's company Mount Noir you can follow it on Instagram Emily is uh, here curls in the world great handle and ooh, look at Lamont just doing his thing. Um, this is really nice <laughs> to see this as well. All right, so everybody, thanks very, very much for your questions on YouTube, your comments. Winona, Emily, Lamont, it's been a pleasure talking to you, bringing diversity to the mountain slopes around the world. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.